Good evening, church, and thank you so much for joining us tonight on the Heart and Hands podcast. My name's Cole. I'm the pulpit minister here at Central Church of Christ. And as you know, if you've been watching over the last few weeks, you know we've been moving through our interview of Amy Tustin, a domestic missionary who's based out of Pennsylvania. Uh, I want to thank you guys for being here so much. I want to thank you for for watching. And uh, I really hope that this interview and, and, her, and Amy's uh, discussion and what she's been through and all of those things are an inspiration and encouragement to you, church. Uh, that's why we do stuff like this. I pray that it has been a blessing to you and yours, but I'm excited. Let's keep going. Let's keep getting, uh, let's, let's get through this interview and uh, church, may the Lord bless you. So when you reach out to the world, you know, that's as the church, we could adopt some of these things and, and get get ourselves in a place where God can use us. But when we reach out to the world, when you reach out to the world, what is it that you're encountering the most of? What is it like you're encountering people that are in that kingdom of darkness? What does that darkness look like in the 21st century? What is it that, that when you bring the gospel light, what is it that people are waking up from? What's what would you say is that some of the one of the biggest things? Oh boy. The again the the word that comes to my mind um is and and don't be frightened by the by the word uh but addiction. Mm. And it's not necessary because we automatically go to the biggies. We go drugs, alcohol, pornography, which are obviously in this mix. However, the the um People forget that, and we kind of alluded to it a little just a little bit ago, um, that food is an addiction. Mm. Shopping. Um, oh, I got to, you know, man, if I could just get my hands on that truck. It's a mm. dopamine. It's, it's the reward center in the brain. And so we have this pain and, and again, this is obviously people outside of Christ, but also people in Christ. Mm. So, um, but we have this pain that typically is from childhood and just the stuff that's kind of accumulated over the years. And, um, you know, we've been beat up in this world. We have, we certainly, we get beat up every day. And so all of this accumulates and subconsciously in order for us to get that pain to, you know, we want to kind of stuff that down a little bit. Well, what's what's the thing you I like bubble tea. I don't know if anybody <laughs> uh if any of my people are out there watching, I know they're they're cracking up right now going I've I've witnessed it. She's dragged me along. Um you know, it could just be, you know, we call it comfort food. I mean, mm. it's it has it written it it's a it's a term. Um it could be the you know, video games, uh Netflix, binge watching our our shows. Um, these kinds of things. I just, I see people who are just surviving mm. instead of thriving. God has, we're designed to thrive. That's actually one of my taglines too. We're designed to thrive. Um, we are just surviving. I feel like and I mean, we have, I mean, it's like, we're, it's almost like zombies. Like we're just trying to get through our day. People just so are just trying to just do it again. Gosh, yeah. Um, you know, some of that is, is the busyness. Some of it is just, again, it's the accumulation of being beat up. We have depression, anxiety. There, I mean, suicide. Some of the people that, I mean, um, New Zealand is one of the most beautiful. It's unreal how beautiful New Zealand is. And it has one of the highest suicide rates. Why? It's a very peaceful nation. Why? They seem to have everything. Modern technology, you know, they got, why? Why is the suicide rate that, that high? We're... We're just, we're, we're trying to numb the pain mm. and we are living on autopilot. We are just zombies walking around and um, we don't know that there's anything better. We just, we're so mm. used to this. We just don't even know. 
that there is better. Like how I said in, you know, in our last session, I just kept thinking if this is life, like, what's the point? I just felt like there had to be something Prior more. Prior to Christ. Yes. Like yeah. there had to be something else. Because if not, what's the point, you know? And so I was just, you know, I, I chased what I, I didn't know what it was. You know, eventually I realized, well, the only thing I haven't tried is God. I'm trying mm -hmm. all these other things. You know, and again, it doesn't have to be. Now, of course, I like I said, I I was into alcohol. Thankfully, never got into drugs. Um, but that is obviously, and it and it doesn't have to necessarily be illegal street drugs. It could be, you know, medicate like that's been prescribed I mean, and maybe abused or anything you're using to fill the hole. Anything except God. Except God. That is what we're talking about. Mm. And so it is when everybody around you is do when it when you're just living like everybody else is living you you don't necessarily realize oh wait something's wrong you know you might subtly think it subconsciously but when everybody around you I mean it's it's so common and people just are defeated they just feel defeated and like nothing can ever change, like things are out of their hands. They have just been dealt the cards they've been dealt and they're just going to... And there's no hope. And there's no hope. You get complacent. You get tired. Again, it's like we're just zombies walking around. Um, and uh, they just don't, just don't know. So encountering that, encountering people, what... What is their response when you see this, when you see this, whether, you know, and it, and it doesn't have to be, we oftentimes paint, right, in our minds, we paint the person who needs to hear the gospel most as the drug addict, not the successful banker, or not this, you know, the, the mm -hmm. lady who's working the teller, or not the person behind the counter, right? Mm -hmm. They've got a job, right? So they must be good because they've got a job. They don't need to hear it. Right, we we have this tendency to go, oh, it's this person and not necessarily this mm -hmm. person. But you encounter people from across the spectrum, you know. Obviously, those mm -hmm. who are, you know, doing drugs or, or addicted to something where society doesn't necessarily accept what it is that they're doing. Right. right. Obviously, those are a little bit more aware. Right. Right. But they stand out more. You know, what do you, what do you do when you encounter? some of this darkness, this mm. lack of hope, this just, this enslavement to death. What do you, what, what is, when you see it, what do you say? Are you meaning, what am I saying to them? Yeah, how am I approaching you, this? Like, how do you encounter it? I pretend for a second that I'm, oh. you know, I'm still stuck in that world and I'm enslaved. Like what it, what is it, what is something that you say to try to, to try to break that a little bit? This is where my, my story, I was there. Mm. This is where people's stories are going to truly come into play. But I surely was, someone sitting in the pews for their whole life, surely they don't they have don't a story. Have a, they don't have a past, right? Um, is that, is it, do you think that's the case? You know what, honest, I've, I've encountered both. I'm intrigued by people who have been raised in the, church. in the church because I haven't been you know right. there was this whole body of christ that i never knew i'm tickled about being in the body of christ <laughs> yeah, like i'm still kidding. enamored right you know um and so because i had to seek that out in my 30s you know right. and um so that was a that was a process so i'm intrigued by people who've been raised in the church now i've heard it both ways i've heard um you know that some people never really you're either lost or saved. There is no like third middle ground, you know, but when you are not living in the pit, when you are not living in the pit and living a very not good life and whatever, it's some, you know, some of those people who've been raised in a church have said, oh yeah, I just, you know, and you just kind of, well, yeah, and then I obeyed here and they boop, and then they just keep going on with life as it had been then i've heard others who they they did go astray and they knew that they were living in the pit you know even mm. though they had maybe already been immersed 
or um, you know maybe they did, but they were super young, and it was just because they you know church came, you know whatever the I've heard different stories, and so maybe later on they came to their senses and then you know got back. So I've I've heard it both ways, but wouldn't both be useful though? Obviously, I mean if you both... if you've been in the pit, you can easily look at someone and go. I understand I've been there. Mm-hmm. And there's a, there's a level of empathy that, that I mean, that that is, that is very awesome mm-hmm. that, that, that is there. And God uses our failures for his glory, mm-hmm. right? But for the person who's never experienced it, I don't think the answer is, well, you have nothing to contribute. No. I think rather the answer not. is shock and I can't believe it's like that for you. It doesn't have to be. Right. Right? I mean, right. that's, this. The, your story is the fact that You've never been there, and it doesn't have to be there. Right. Because, I mean, it sounds to me like when you're with the people you encounter that are still lost, that are in that darkness, they don't truly, they truly think that it has, it can be no other way. Correct. So you have, you, you no matter where you're at in the it kingdom, God matter. can use you Absolutely. to contribute in this conversation. So Absolutely. you encounter this darkness. I'm sorry, we needed to clarify that. So we, you encounter this darkness for you. You go right back to that story, your own story. It's yeah. I mean, that's um, when you when you are going through something that somebody else is going, th- and they have come out on the other end. Right. You see the, and especially for people who have kn- that they knew me I, in my life BC, they knew me then, and they see what what God has done. Like it is possible. Um, and so again, not, not, it's not me. God did. Now, of course I have to climb out of the pit, but he's, his hand is right there. I have to grab his hand Mm -hmm. and use my legs (laughs) as he pulls me out and, you know, but, um, so it's just bringing, it's bringing that hope. It's, You have to bust through, myth busting, you have to bust through the devil's lies. Mm. I know that the devil was telling you, well, this is just life. I know the devil was telling you, well, where else, what else would you be doing? Well, I have to, I have to work here. I have to be do. you know, Mm. I need to pay the bills. I got to, you know, whatever the thing is, you got to bust through the devil's lies. and And when you... Speak a lie that the devil has been telling somebody, you can see it on their face. Mm. You can see it on their face. I mean, go figure, you know, the the word makes it clear that sin and death and the enemy, these are real powers that we are confronting. You know, Paul says, you know, it's not in Ephesians. He says, our enemy is not flesh and bloods, but the powers and authorities in these heavenly realms that have, that have weighed laced to God's creation, Mm -hmm. right? These are our enemies and they're active today. They're active today, and we've got to be ready. Peter says, right, um, in 1 Peter 3.15, you know, always be prepared to give an answer to anyone who asks you to give an account for the hope that is in you, mm-hmm. with gentleness and reverence. We've always got to be on point, not to confront, you know, I, 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 tell, I tell, the, tell people this all the time, you know, it's, it's not about whether you're a Republican or a Democrat. That has nothing to do with mm-hmm. the politics is one of the lies. Mm-hmm. That's one of the lies, and the enemy uses both of that to totally cloud the issue. Mm-hmm. We've got to start getting more focused on exactly what you're talking about, which is confronting the enemy's lies That's with it. the truth of the gospel. Yep. That's awesome. All right. So you empathize, you confront those lies with the truth. Mm-hmm. What are some of the lies that you that you see the enemy tell people? Oh, like I said, just that, I mean, this is how it's always going to be. This is just life. Mm, yep. Um, you know, well, these were the cards you were dealt. What are you, I mean, you've messed up all this time, what makes you think that anything can be any different? You know, you're just the same part. You're just going to keep doing what you're doing. Um, or it's, it's that, well, I'm a decent human being. You know, we talked about that too. Um, I mean, I'm not out like murdering anyone. I'm not stealing from anyone. Like I'm not, I just want to live my life. You know, I just want to just do the best that I know to do. Right, I'm a decent person, so it must be okay. It's, so I must yeah. be okay. But when you, how many? Okay, so when you encounter somebody who is of that mindset, right? That's a person who's not. You, is that a lie that they're telling themselves that I'm okay, and that's that is the lie itself? It's, yeah, I mean, it's, um, and I don't think any of us want to think of ourselves. I was, I was doing that same thing, you right. know. 
Um, but, uh, you know, behind every, every lie, it's the devil, period, whether... Mm. And, and we just kind of perpetuate it. If we don't override it, if we don't intentionally call call bluff and you know what i mean and, not and true, right? override yeah. it then it's it's just going to perpetuate so much of this uh you know empathizing confronting the lies especially this you know empathizing is important and then confronting the lies with truth that kind of requires you to know some truth though doesn't it <laughs> kind of important to be in the book huh it's a little bit yeah a little bit yeah so this is this is part of that being connected that, that process of being still meditating mm -hmm. on his word, knowing what the word says. Right. You know, um, knowing that all man is made in the image of God and that God is patient, not wanting any to perish, mm -hmm. but all to come to repentance. Understanding the mission that he has in mind for people. Yes. So, so, so vital. So when you, after you confront the lies, what are the reactions that you see when you start? I mean, you're shell shocking people. You know, let's <laughs> let's be frank. When when the truth shows up, right? You uh -huh. open up the gospels, you see Jesus bringing the truth. He wasn't well received, uh -huh. right? So when you're confronting these lies with truth, what are some of the reactions that you you encounter that you commonly encounter? Well, I mean, I immediately think of um, you know, Matthew 7 and he talks about the the narrow gate and uh we already know that the majority the majority. And if you take uh, an example from history, uh, the day of Pentecost, you know, mm -hmm. probably more than 3 million people there because they didn't count women and children. And so probably more than three. So less than 1% obeyed the gospel that day. Mm. Right? Yeah, right. And so I have to think that the ratio is probably not much different. You mm. know, it's just human. It's just where we're at. It's a very sobering, sad thought. Um, but knowing from the beginning, most are not going to be receptive. And so, like, okay, I hear you on with life is the, you know, people just keep, mm. even though there is this pain in their life. You see them, tr like, I have told people, you are in a prison cell and the door isn't even locked. You literally could walk right out of here and I'll come and get you and I will hold your hand and I will walk out with you. You know, there was actually a story and I can't even, I just remember bits and, and bits and pieces, but it was about, um, you know, these, these women that were in these little prisons and stuff. And the one yeah. goes out and she's like, oh my word, like there are no guards here. There are no, like the sun is out here and the, come on and kept yelling for the, come on. Right. <laughs> it is. It is one of the most heart-wrenching things. Here's one of the challenges to answer a question from, from back there. To watch people drown and not even kick their legs and move their arms. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> it is one of the hardest things to continue to see over and over because it is the majority. So, especially in a performance-based society, right? I mean, having actually, like, seen people, both physically and spiritually, go down the drain, right? I, I mean, I've been, I've been a part of that. For, for those of you who don't know, I worked as a paramedic for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And... I mean, I can, you say that. And for me, I can, I can think of scenes in my life where that, yeah. that, that was the case. And now on this side of the cross and on this side of, you know, obedience, mm -hmm. um, you know, I've, I've encountered plenty of people spiritually who have done exactly what you're, you're talking about. Yeah. And how do you, especially in a performance-based society with that in mind, how do you judge success then? <laughs> I mean, how, how are you, I mean, how do you have the, the strength and the will to continue to, to carry on in the face of such mm. 
what our society, our performance-based society would consider such great failure. I mean, as we looked at Matthew, as you said about Matthew 7, you know, this is almost guaranteed failure. Mm -hmm. So then what's success? Are you meaning for me as, as I, a missionary? I mean... How do I know you, if I'm on target? <laughs> for you as a missionary in that very specific way, but mm -hmm. then also more broad as the church. I mean, we're encouraging mm. people today, right now, we're encouraging people to take ministry up mm -hmm. into the places where God has them, where he wants them to take it up. So they're going to confront this very real truth. Yes. So yeah, it's very specifically for you and then very broadly for the church. Okay. And it's one and the same because okay. I'm... The church is made up of a bunch of me, you know. <laughs> yes. Oh, that sounds way more scary than I meant for it to sound. <laughs> we don't want to. We don't want any more of me. <laughs> In the sense that you were trying but a to whole bunch of individuals. Right, I mean, right, just yeah. a bunch of you know, a bunch of individuals is what makes up the the church. So, it's not the church. What is each individual member of the church? To and it's what we talked about before: slowing down. You know, it's that wash, rinse, repeat, mm -hmm. continue to plug into God, put your spiritual glasses on, overriding uh, the lies with truth. God is the one running the show. I'm not doing a thing other than facility. It's like God is driving. I'm in the back seat. He's driving around and, and we're scoping out people and he goes, hey, go pick them up. And so I get out and I open up the door and say, he, he has a message for you. He wants to talk to you. And if they get in the car, I close the door behind them. I hop back in the back seat and, and we're on our way again. Mm. And so it's, it's not, it's not me doing anything anyway. I, I tell the illustrate when I'm doing, uh, like evangelism coaching, uh, I give the illustration. First of all, I want to let you know that it's, I, we have to set the, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? We have to set the proper expectation, expectation. that, uh, first of all, you're not doing a thing. <laughs> God is the one that's doing it. So you think about, uh, you know, dad's going to build a deck and little four-year-old boy wants to help dad build a deck, right? Right. And so he, he gives him a little, he has his little plastic hammer and he's, and he's probably dropping nails and stuff's everywhere. And he's probably making it harder on dad, but you know, he wants to help dad build a deck. And so, oh, here, son, here, hit the, you know, hit the nail. And okay. When that's all, cause we have no business being in God's kingdom and you had talked about the tree and being grafted, you know, I just want to be on the tree. Right. So it's like, I just want like, to, I just want to know I got a little spot over I'm, here. In the, I'm just happy here on the tree. Right? <laughs> I just yeah. want to be on the tree. And so, um, you know, we have no business being in his kingdom. Mm. We have no business being in his kingdom. However, the gift is a sense of belonging and ownership that he gifts us by letting us pretend to even do anything in his kingdom. Okay. Right. And so here, here, son, hit the name. Okay. Oh, now deck is all done and they stand back. And how do you think that little boy feels? He is tickled out of his mind. Look at what we did together. That is what God has gifted us to do. So we're not doing anything. We're swinging a hammer and dropping nails all over the place is what we're doing. Um, but it's being available. It's those things that we talked about earlier. And um, so recognizing that God is ultimately in control of this. <laughs> And their rejection of his message is exactly that. The rejection of his message. His message. It's right. not it's not ours. It's it he's not. he's building the deck. And we're just we're there inviting all the neighborhood kids to come in and build the deck. And if people don't want to come, then next. It, next. It's, it doesn't have anything right. to do, you know, with us. Mm -hmm. And so under I think so yeah, setting as you said, setting those proper expectations, understanding that this is his mission mm -hmm. and we're getting to come alongside him. The burden is off of us. That's right. It is not a burden. And and we already know he says that. Like whatever it is that he's calling us, it's not a burden. And so um we just having that that burden lifted mm. helps to it may it makes it lighter, obviously. Right. And so it we're we're more able to to walk that path with proper expectations. That's right. And so the hardship there 
is knowing is is what you described it isn't isn't the failure in and of itself right it's not about it's not about me we can remove me from the picture mm -hmm. if they don't accept the message they don't accept the ne the message the success or failure for me is whether or not I took God up on this mission to go tell people. Did I get in to, the back seat and say, hey, I'll open up the door? Right, exactly. That's I'm all a, that, that's it. That's the success or failure. So as long as you're opening the door up for people in this analogy, right? Mm -hmm. God is the taxi driver. He pulls over. He says, mm -hmm. hey, open the door for them. Uh -huh. And as long as we open the door and say, hey, do you want to get in? Uh -huh. we're, we're successes. That's we, it. We are doing well. The difficulty, and this is where be, being connected and being still before God is mm -hmm. so important. The difficulty is as you watch person after person say no. Yes. And the people around you continue to to make the decision to drown without, to, to make the decision to stay in prison and not open the door. Yeah. Um, as they make those real decisions that God in his love allows them to make, um, it's not being torn up. That's yeah. the real difficulty. And, and you know, the longer that you do this, the longer that we do this, the more and more that becomes a realization. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a balance of not, not allowing yourself to get calloused because you're trying mm. to, you know, because it's, it's painful to watch. It is super painful to watch. Uh, and I'm sure that you had the same being in. Um, EMS. It, yeah. And so trying not to get hardened mm. still feeling what you're feeling but keeping yourself focused on well an ems the, i got hardened well <laughs> yeah i burned out and got i mean and that's and a lot of people end up in that direction and it's right. it's not you know it's something in in ministry as we encourage people to get involved in ministry wherever they're at to get involved in being aware of what god is doing with the people mm -hmm. around them um, it's so important to understand that burnout is a real thing. Absolutely. And if you're not doing this, if you're not connected to God and, and this isn't something church, this isn't something that we're, we're confused by. We've seen it. We've seen it in healthcare providers. We've mm -hmm. seen it oh, in, yeah. in people who are supposed to be taking care of the elderly. Mm -hmm. You know, this burnout is, is a real thing. And being that, being that person and, and going a time and time again and seeing the same results and everything, it can, it can have a mm -hmm. true effect on callousing ourselves. So we have to be very careful. Right. I really have one last question for you. And that is for those people who would say, you don't understand. This isn't me. I can't talk. I can't open my mouth. <laughs> I can't, you know, I, I just can't. That's not, God has not gifted me, right? You're a gifted evangelist. I am not, right? You're gifted in this evangelism stuff. I am not. What, who, for whatever reason, they say, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. What What's your response to that? Oh, so this is actually why I didn't realize that I was doing evangelism coaching, but when people reached out, it just naturally uh, started taking place. Um I want people to know also, I know it's very hard to believe, but I am an introvert. <laughs> and so, um, what? I, yes, Welcome I am. Club. I know, the right? Club. Woo! It's a uh, <laughs> team introvert, but, um, God makes no mistakes. Mm. And there are, we talked about my big ridiculous personality. So for example, there are people out there that if I were to get my hands on them and and word vomit all over them, they would run for the hills. That those are the God does not have me to help those people. I will have them running for the hills. There are other people who are more reserved and more uh, calm and quiet. They are not as loud talking as I am and things like that. We need everybody. There is somebody out there waiting for somebody just like you, mm -hmm. whoever you are, however you are, wherever you are, whatever that looks like. And so every, every person in the body of Christ has a mission field. And you and I had talked also about, you know, I said, it looks, there's, uh, you know, the, the, the stay at home mom that has five or six kids and she homeschools and she has her groceries delivered, never really goes many places. And then there's a, a woman who, um, you know, owns a party planning business and she knows everybody in nine counties. 
Um, and, you know, so their mission fields look different, but they have the mission field. There is a field. There is a field. Mm. Exactly. And so God has not made a mistake. Um, it's not, we are not supposed to look like anyone else. Mm. Wash, rinse, repeat, plug into those things and get connected with God because he's going to unfold. It's like he will dump out the puzzle pieces on the on the card table right. and he's going to help you build in that frame of he gave you abilities. He gave you limitations. He gave you all of, to nudge you toward what it is that his purpose for you, what he has for you to do and who it is around he will send he's not going to send you somebody that you're not a, that you specifically are not able to to help right of course it's their choice but what i'm saying is he's not he's not going to send me i certainly now that i've said it i shouldn't even say it but he's not going to send me like a scientist uh you know somebody that's like because i'm not scholarly i'm not gonna i'm not the person not the for them right and so there is somebody else out there for that person. In other words, you think that we should probably just accept that God knows what he's doing? Well, that kind of sounds, yeah, we might we might just roll with that, you know. To... But it's, it's not going to happen if we never slow down, if we never learn how to work those margins, if we don't know how to be still in his mm -hmm. presence, right? And if we don't allow him to do the pruning and go, di direct us, right? Right. You know, neither of us grew up in the church. Are you familiar with the the way they the the a com apparently a common way that prayers used to be ended with guide, guard, and direct? Oh, okay. Have you ever heard of that? I I have. It wasn't common work, but yeah. So I I hadn't I'd never heard of that. And then you know somebody said somebody was talking about a class on prayer and learning how to say guide, guard, and direct. And oh, okay. I didn't grow up in the church either, yeah. so I was curious if you had ever heard it. But li take that literally. God is literally guiding us. He is mm -hmm. literally guarding us and he is mm -hmm. literally directing his church mm -hmm. to bring the gospel and everybody can do it that's it nobody cannot do it right everybody can do it right because he's the power behind it that's it it's just accepting your understanding not accepting but understanding who god has made you to be in his body and to do that we need to slow down we need to be still and we mm -hmm. need to let him prune. all mm -hmm. right is there anything else i mean is there anything else that you that that you can think of that the church just needs to know, needs to stand on, needs to be aware of, mm. needs to be comfortable with to to better bring the gospel. Um, the, and this may tie in with your with your last question too, but it just popped into my mind um, that uh, just had a conversation with a, a sister in Christ the other day, and I the the reminder of there is more going on on the inside of a person mm. than what you're going to be aware of on the outside. Um, that evidence, there's there's so much more that is taking place on the inside before you're going to see the evidence of, you know, the, the changing and, and God prepping a heart and doing those kinds of things. And so um, just to, and again, it's, it's God prepping the heart. So that's that's We're his work. With God. <laughs> that's the partner I want. I mean, you know, we were just playing games the other day, and I was like, "Well, who am I going to get as my part?" You know, I'm trying to get the best person as my pa God is my partner in this. So, like, what? Trust and, him. And if he's the one that's in charge, and I don't get the results that I want, guess what? It's his fault anyway. <laughs> he's doing. You know, he's. Uh, he it's it's on him trust i him. don't have that's it yeah he's i'm just along for the ride so right, you heard it here church trust god <laughs> um amy i can't i cannot thank you enough for coming i can't thank you enough for visiting the congregation here and i, I certainly can't thank you enough for for sitting around for as long as we have and, and making yourself available for this discussion uh sister i i said a long time ago that you're quintessential and i still mean that today <laughs> it's been fantastic love you to death and uh, I'm looking forward to what God is going to do through you, through your, through the ministry that you're working in, and 
for the kingdom of the church. It's going to be great. I appreciate you. So church, if you have any questions, if there's anything you need prayer for, if there's any help we can, we can do for you, or if you haven't obeyed the gospel, you don't know how you want to learn, please, 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 please reach out. Do not sit there at home listening to the lies of the devil, thinking that things can't change. God can change anybody and anything, and he does it on a routine basis. It's his job. Mm-hmm. Well, let's pray, sister, and then we'll, we'll, mm-hmm. we'll end it off. Father God, we come before your throne and Father, we are so great. Mm-hmm. Father, you are a great and mighty God. Father, help your church to trust you. Help your church to live under your wing, Father. Encourage and strengthen your church so that we can take the gospel to the world, Father. And I pray that you strengthen and encourage Amy as she is diligently working, a diligent servant in your kingdom, Father, as you well know. Father, I pray that you can help all of us become more like Christ and be those diligent workers in your kingdom in the field and help people see the light of your gospel. Father, we pray all this in your son's name. Amen. Amen.